Hello YouTube! I am Pinstar and this is Game Dev Tycoon Strategy and Tactics Episode 3. So today we're gonna attempt a little bit something different. In my original playthrough of this we uh, were gearing ourselves to hit our smash hit on our ninth game. We are currently about to make our eighth game and you know what? I'm gonna make a try for it. I'm going to I'm going to shoot for the fields. We might get it, we might not get it. This is um, making it a little bit uh, we're we're hitting it a little close here because we're going to be trying it on the TES. And trying to do your smash hit on one of the consoles is both a great and a difficult idea. So maybe taking an early shot at it in the chance of getting it um, would be sort of a higher risk high reward and if we whiff then we can always fall back on something a, a little bit more pedestrian, but a lot more guaranteed. I'll explain as we go, and we'll see if we can hit this or not. So, develop new game. We, um, we're going to be doing our school topic. Now, as you can see here, school is only okay for E for Everyone. School actually wants to be a young-focused game. The TES as a console also only uh, also happens to like younger audiences better than E for Everyone. And the TES is currently at the top of the heap here. So if we can hit our smash hit, we'd be getting our smash hit on the market dominant console. Even with the Master V in play, we're gonna be getting top tier sales uh, exposure. Now for our genre here, school, as I mentioned, is really, really versatile. Uh, it basically works for just about every genre except for action and, uh, and casual, which again, we're not even gonna research casual here. But everything else is pretty darn good with school, so we're gonna get a lot of mileage out of this. Um, now, as far as what the um, TES likes, the TES, unfortunately, loves um, casual games, but is um, a little bit pickier when it comes to the others. I think we're going to go for an RPG, because the RPG is the easiest genre to get the bubble ratio correct. The TES tolerates RPGs. Uh, RPGs are good with schools, uh, with a school genre. Um, so I think this is our best chance at, uh, at getting our smash hit. Of course, with the Pinstar Prime engine. Um, and what are we going to call this? We shall call this... Shona's School Day. School Days. So yes, we uh, we we track the, uh, the the trials and tribulations of young Shona at a school, but not just any school. This is not just a let's play a game about going to school. No, this is a school where all of the students are younger versions of mythological creatures. So will she be able to swap hair uh, hair care tips with the young Medusa? Will she be able to get the uh, the Griffin to stop uh, bullying her? What uh, will she be able to sneak past her, her cheat sheet from the beholder teacher uh, while examining the test? That is shown as school days, and it is an RPG. Let us give it a shot. 2D graphics version two. And you saw the gameling. We, we like the gameling. The gameling's gonna be a thing, um, or at least hopefully. It depends on what the publishers do, but I'll get into that later. Um, but yeah, the gameling. Gameling's a good system. Um, if we can, if we, if, we, if the, the publisher face plays nice. But we'll get into that. We'll get into that. Alright, starting our bubble generation right. No bugs, two freebies. We are going to turn on all the bells and whistles here. Because again, because the TES has a mild penalty for any, any game genre that isn't classic, or classic, uh, casual, uh, we, uh, we, we need to push back against that. That's the kind of the risky part here, is trying to get your smash hit on a console. You're fighting against that, that inherent penalty. Um, that's why we need to turn both of these on so that we can have, uh, we, 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 we can come armed and ready to bear here with game quality here to push in the other direction. All 
Okay, we need a little bit more tech there. This is a little bit too lopsided. Um, we'll get, yeah, there. We, we need more tech because if we get too lopsided in the, oh God, this should have been an adventure game. Uh, we're gonna get too, we're gonna get way too lopsided here. We may, we may whiff on this game. If, oh, okay, oh, thank God. Oh, thank God, we got a burst of tech just in time. Oh, and an extra bubble there. Oh, the game link already released, dang it. Now we're gonna have to compete against the game link. All right, I'm liking our bubble totals. I'm liking our ratio. This this has a good chance at smash heading. We'll see once we get the, the other thing we need to see is, uh, are we gonna be able to ding 2D Graphics V2? Yes, that's the important one right there. That's the most important one right there. Because now that opens up the next avenues of graphics and we can build a new engine into that and proceed into our next thing. We don't, we won't necessarily have all the stuff to it, but still should be good enough. First reviews, shown as school days. Let's take a look. Oh, look at that. Look at that. A 10. I smell smash hit. Another 10. Oh, another 10. But the game's going to give me a 9 here. I guarantee it. Yep. The game, you actually can't get a perfect 10 across the board until much later in the game. But here, we knocked it out of the park. We knocked it out of the park real good. Um, so yeah, this is going to smash it. And this is a smash hit on, on either the highest or the second highest, uh, uh, market share console. Cause I forget if the game link is ahead of, uh, the, uh, yeah, 9.75. This is our smash hit. And look at this. Look at this first week over a hundred thousand in a week, in just a week, a single freaking week. This is why um, uh, taking the extra risk and trying to hit your smash hit on one of the consoles is a good idea. Especially if your topics line up. We got lucky that we got school because school likes young, TES likes young, we got the license to the TES, it all plays out nicely. Yes. Um, yeah, let's move. No reason to stick in the garage. Now we can move to a real office. And yes, now we can start hiring staff. We are, yeah, we debuted at number one. School and RPG, great combination. Sound, not very thing. Topic audience match, school young is great. We are four weeks in, we're still ranked number one. And here's the final uh, thing, just to let you know, if you haven't guessed already from the uh, units sold here, um, a storm of good reviews and excited customers. Um, so yeah, this is officially speaking, our smash hit. All right, Shoda, you got your name on uh, the uh, uh, on the smash hit. So, and and because of how versatile the school genre is, there's good opportunities for more stuff. We're still rank one. This is nuts. All right, but first things first. I, as much as I'd love to uh, uh, fawn over how much money we're making here, well, we got to get our staff management on. So let's get our staff management on. Okay, we finally slipped to rank two. Uh, video game magazine. So, uh, new way to market games, marketing. Well, we're actually not going to worry about marketing for, for now. We Marketing comes into play later. Um, because coming up is what is known as the publisher phase. All right, we have officially done that. So now we need to hire workers. We need to hire exactly two workers. Uh, so let's fill position. And this particular tip, which I gave in my original series, is unchanged. The best 
thing you can do as far as the budget is exactly 80k. This will give you access to three different candidates, uh, which is pretty good to pick from, but not so expensive that you break the bank trying to just find the right workers. Now, as far as the right workers, we also need to decide what, how we want to skew their initial skills. Complex algorithms will skew them towards tech heavy, game demo will make them more or less balanced, and then show reel will gear them more towards um, um, uh, um, ah, design. Um, now, as far as our particular bent here, we, again, I, I want to go, I want to ultimately focus on strategy games because that's kind of what I do. That's who I am. Um, but because the game naturally leans in favor of um, uh, design, we need to counterbalance that by front-loading ourselves with extra, extra tech people. So I'm actually going to get two complex algorithms guys, because our, our guy is perfectly balanced. Um, so we're going to do complex algorithms. Oh no, rank three. Still, I mean, this is craziness. And it's off the market. We we made we held on to rank three before it finally came off the market. Um, all right, Alan Lowe. Um, that's not too bad. See, I want uh, they they come in two different flavors. They come with sort of a you know two thirds tech, one third design, and then you'll find these guys that are like absolutely no design, but a all their stuff into tech and we want actually one of those so and alan lowe is actually uh actually he's a he's a pretty good uh one speed is really good research anything as long as these two are in the 200s then i'm happy evan francis level one there is something to be said with starting with level one employees because again because you're competing against yourself um and and not uh and, and you know not anything else now that we've now that we've cracked uh, sort of the the initial hurdle um, you know starting with level one employees is certainly there's something to be said for that um, and here see here's one of these tech guys that are that and that but level ones and level ones I still kind of want to stick with a level two because these uh, ancillary things are so good and I kind of like sticking with level starting with level two people it gives us a little bit more baseline here so we will get Alan Lowe for our first person. Let's fill our next one. And once again, 80K, complex algorithms. And you, actually, I'm going to wait for the other person to actually be hired, and then I'll start them on staff welcome training. Dribra McDonald, level two, but her ancillaries are terrible. So no thank you. And Math, ah, so Anne Mathis is someone who's like one of those hyper specialized adam cross level two but your ancillaries are garbage my friend and mathis may be our ticket here although hers are she's actually kind of not so good and you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna whiff it and just go again because that's the other thing if you if all three are duds just do it again. You're down another 80K, but what's 80K to 3.4 million that we uh, were able to bank thanks to uh, Shona's school days? So let's see if we can get another employee. I also, we can't, I, I'd name some of the employees as our name and game people, but as far as I can tell, you can't rename employees. I tried, I looked. Uh, Braden Brock, um, I'd rather research be in the 200s. Ooh, Johnny Rome, now we're talking. See, I wanted somebody who is hyper tech focused and then Caesar Powell, nah, Johnny Rome, done. All right, train, staff welcome training, train, staff welcome training, please. Now, everyone's efficiency, as denoted by these little bars here, are in the toilet right now because, you know, the team's coming together. They're still, you know, people are getting used to each other. In fact, there's a little hidden mechanic in the game that once you've hired somebody, their very first game actually is going to get a little bit of a penalty because it's their first game. Um, 
So our, we're gonna we're gonna want to keep our expectations a little on the lower side. In the meantime, here though, we can do some research and we can get that media, those medium games because that is our that's what we need to break into the next phase, the publisher phase, which is what we're about to start here. All right, so when you're when the efficiency is low, you do not want to make. Um, games and you don't want to train them because how how many bubbles they generate and how many points they gain from training I mean besides the staff welcome training that's meant to make their efficiency bars not take as long to recover um, so those things you can't really do properly while their efficiency is low here. So best thing to keep them busy, research, because they don't fail at research. Um, so we need to make a decision on what we're gonna do here. Now, um, I hate that 2D graphics version three is 80 research points here. Um, it kind of shoehorns us going into 3D graphics. Honestly, if I wanted to sort of be true to myself, um, I, I would actually go the 2D graphics version 3 here, but that would also hamstring us getting a bunch of other little bells and whistles that we want to add to our next engine. So we're going to go the 3D graphics version 1 here. If this was a little bit cheaper, I'd go the 2D graphics just because, again, strategy games don't need graphics that much. In fact, they're one of the least intensive graphical games here. Um, so in that sense, I kind of want to go the route of the 2D graphics. Um, you know, I might make this a non-standard. You're, you're nine times out of 10, if you're doing anything else, you're going to want to go the route of 3D graphics version one. It's only because I'm hemming and hawing here. We can always do 3D graphics version one and then maybe jump back to 2D graphics uh, once we get some more research points under our belt. Um, because we can get into large games. The only thing that 2D graphics prevents us from doing properly is AAA class games, but I'm not a big fan of AAA class games. So yeah, let's do 3D graphics version one. Um, you're gonna research, and yeah, we're gonna research our other bells and whistles here. So we definitely want, let's see, uh, open world. Definitely want open world. All right, the Vena gear is out, but again, that this is all going to depend on what our um... ah. So here we go. Larger games seem to be seen by more people, and this is where a publisher can come in handy. So there's there's a there's a mechanic in the game is we need to um, nestle up to the teats of the big publishers for the moment. Um, Right now, if we try to make our own medium games, they get a severe sales penalty just because we're so unknown. Um, right now, we only have 5.4K fans, which is a pretty decent for, for, the, for the run, but we need to get up to 100K fans. And doing picking away with just regular games of our own make, it would take forever. The way you get around that is by you doing publishers. Publishers, um, you don't get the penalty, the sales penalty from that. In fact, uh, you, publishers make your sales go through the roof, but you don't get most of those of the money from those sales. You only get a small royalty. Um, but it's still enough to keep the lights turned on and it generates a lot of fans because of how many people are exposed to your games. And then once you crack the 100k mark, then you're on your own to do your own games properly and you don't have to be beholden to the publishers. So yes, we will do that once we get our new act, uh, once we get our new um, uh, game engine uh, primed and ready to go. We're going to continue doing our research here. Um, definitely want to go for some mono sound. We are not wasting points on casual games and we are not, we're not ready to tap into marketing either. So I think we're just going to get uh, mono sound game tutorials and heck we have enough left over for a new topic. Works for me. So you research us game tutorials. And you, I'm actually, we're, let's save this just in case we need to um, research something specific. Well, although we could see, 
Medieval. Medieval. One of the most flexible and versatile topics in the game. Second only to sci-fi in its flexibility. You can go young audiences, you can go mature. There are, most of the genres work well with medieval. It's a Swiss army knife to be certain. Um, so we're gonna wanna pick up medieval. It is just that good. All right, um, now uh, while you're doing your last bit of research, let's build our custom engine. Um, and yeah, 3D graphics version one. Uh, we're gonna wanna include tutorials. We're gonna wanna include the open world. We're gonna wanna include the mono sound. That should be enough bells and whistles for us to get. And we'll pick up the, the ability to research the rest of them later. Um, the um, pin star. The Pinstar Pool Engine. I don't know why I'm using pool. You know, like eight ball, cue ball, that type of pool. Not swimming pool. But, eh, why not? All right, we will create engine. And again, the engine will eventually be created. It might be a little bit sl more slowly created, but it's okay that everybody is sitting here at, um, at that. Yeah, the G64 is gonna be taken off the market shortly. That's okay. This will give their time for their, um, yeah, they, they will now be ready to go. And now we've got our engine. And let us, actually, let's, before we dive into our first game, let's give our staff one round of training. One thing I'd like to do for everybody, just to start us off, is do every, give everybody the make me think training. That gives everybody's research speed a boost. Uh, there's no such thing as too much research speed. So make me think. And we don't have enough research points for the others. Oops. And now we have to sit here and wait for our guy to uh, do his training. Uh, yeah, so the Govador is gone. So no more G64. Should be off the market shortly. Please no dandruff. Please no dandruff. We're wasting valuable time here. That was a that was a poor. I I always like to see how many games and how much money we made off of it. 1.1 million, and that wasn't even our smash hit. Um, but yeah, we we got some good stuff. Okay, time to dive into publishers, and let's do at least one publishing deal before we end the episode here. So here we have to do what they tell us to do. So here. Um, Electronic Mass Productions wants us to make a medieval adventure game um, with um, they need a minimum score of seven um, and they're giving or offering us up 12% uh, royalties. That normally would be something I would jump at. The only downside here is one, our team is now tech focused. So pulling a, a, an adventure game out of our uh, rear end is actually a little bit harder than it looks. Um, also, because our first game is, um, this is our first game with a new team, we're, we're probably going to, it's going to be a little bit less. So we don't want to, we, I'm looking maybe a, a minimum score of six, if we can pull it. Ooh, any topic simulation. I would so do this one if it wasn't minimum score eight. Um, that's, that's, that's the, that's the, that's the, the, the kicker right there. Cause we already have the license to the TES. Crime any genre, um, law RPG. You want a seven. Boy, these guys, everyone wants this. Yeah. Crime any genre. All right, Medieval Adventure is right out because Adventure is, is not so good for us. Can we hit? You know what? I think we could do an Any Topic Simulation game, even with the penalties, although mm, I'd be a lot more comfortable with a seven requirement. Crime Any Genre. Uh, no, Crime on the TES? No. So that leaves us with Law RPG. Law RPG. 
Uh, you know what? We're going to have to bite the bullet and do an any topic simulation and see if we can hit that eight. We might not, but again, we can soak the penalty if we don't. Okay, um, any topic simulation. Well, we could circle back to, um, actually, we could do medieval simulation. That would actually work out well, because medieval works out fine for young audiences. Um, we could also circle back to fashion simulation or dance simulation, but yeah, that we'd be retreading an old topic combo there. So maybe, maybe not. Yeah, let's um, let's do that medieval simulation uh, on the TES, and the TES is fine with uh, with um, simulation games. They don't penalize those too hard. It's the adventure games and the strategy games that really get the big penalties there. Um, and let's call this um, Ye Eat the Hungry Knight. Yes, we follow um, the, uh, the, 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 the order of Ye Eat. Um, training up a band of, of knights to defend the realm and, and snack and throw things in non-discreet uh, directions. And we're going to do the Pinstar Pool uh, engine here. 3D Graphics version 1. Let's hit it. Um, right then. So, um, so uh, one technique, and, and I presented this in my original series, I'm going to do it here, is at least for this stage of the game, each staff member is going to be assigned to a whole stage um, because they can only contribute so much. And this gives you free reign of the sliders. Um, so engine... Um, Engine gameplay and story quest. This is a little bit more design focused here. So we're going to give this to Alan uh, here. So gameplay gets that, engine gets that. Boom. Uh, as far as our bells and or whistles, we'll, we'll, let, we'll turn the engine on. We don't need the linear story right this second. Because um, we don't want... Actually, no, we might want to keep that turned on. Um, but again, I don't want to overshoot too badly here either. All right, so now we got three people generating bubbles here for us. All right, so sec one here. This one is a little bit more focused on tech. More, mainly because of artificial intelligence. So Johnny Rome is going to get all three of these. Dialogues, nope. Artificial intelligence, big yep. We should get plenty of tech bubbles here. And you can see now, because of our team, our technology is really skewing towards it, which is, uh, I mean, we don't want it to be too skewed. We could actually probably get away with some action games now, too. Look at all that! Re all those research bubbles we're generating. That's why I fished for people that had a, a 200 plus research skill. Yeah, this is a really awful ratio here. Uh, we may actually be too tech focused, uh, but we can we can we can skew that in the other direction. Um, yeah, world design no, graphics yes, sound yes. This, oh yeah, and this is gonna be me. All right, now everyone's at 100%, so nobody is overworked. But yeah, we really need more design bubbles. Otherwise our ratio is just gonna be completely out. Okay, that's still a little bit thick for my blood. Rogue design piece? Hmm. Yeah, that's a 33 tech. We went a little crazy there. Price is right time. Three graphics level one. All right, and we are level three too. Every, our guys are gaining up levels as well. Oh, is this, is this gonna be anywhere in the realm of an eight? 
All right, so yeah, this, this we can add to our next engine, all of those. Let's let's ja let's generate a. Uh, actually, we'll wait on the game report. Okay, fingers crossed, folks. I got I I literally have no clue here. Ooh, the other. All right, an eight. That's a good start. Uh, seven. More. 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 Oh, we're gonna miss the rating. We're gonna miss the rating. If if it were a seven, we would have hit it. And you know what? We we missed this because we uh, we had that penalty for the first game penalty for everybody. Um, and also probably because our ratio was probably terrible. So we're going to eat that penalty up front. Um, uh, it is not getting the rating. So what we got to do here before they start getting tired is let's train them. Um, we... I think I think we need to we need to skew the team a little bit more towards design here. Uh, so I think I'm going to give everybody a round of game design for pirates. That's the one that focuses the gains on designing here. So, yep, 355k. But eh, you win some, you lose some. I knew that that eight was asking for a bit too much. Game design for pirates. But all of the sevens were just terrible uh, in terms of what they were asking for. And that's kind of the that's that's the kind of the thing that you have to fight against in the publisher era is that sometimes they just give you some really, really garbage contracts that are just no, no. They, they set you up for failure because they don't know what the heck they're doing. They just want a game made. All right, our guys are just getting into being tired. You can see their efficiency bars popping up here. Action games, eh? Hmm. Let's ponder that one in our next episode. So yeah, my last tip here is wait for your workers to get tired and by tired their bars appear, then send their butts on vacation. There we go, send on vacation. And once they're back from vacation, then you know they'll be well rested and you can safely make another game. All right. So if you guys like this episode and you want to see more like it, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and leave me a comment. Good, bad or indifferent. Your feedback's always welcome. So until next time, this has been Pinstar signing out. See ya.